Thanks for having me, um, NAPB graduate student working group. Um, and we just had our education committee uh, meeting this morning and everything's going well, uh, given the circumstances and, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to meet um, this year in, in uh, University of Nebraska Lincoln. Hopefully, fingers crossed, because that's always a really fun meeting. Anyways, I'm gonna dive into it and I haven't shared my screen yet, so I'm gonna do that. And I've got a kind of a two-part little webinar that I'm gonna do. So the first half is going to be just talking about how I've utilized research, how I've utilized my video hobby um, as a research tool. And then the second half is gonna be a little, kind of a crash course or a, a tutorial. Um, and I can kind of show you how I do things and how it's, from what I can see, not, not all that hard to do. Um, and, and so, yeah. Um, I might full screen this. We consume more content now than ever. We all have phones in our pockets, um, which are like little video screens in there, right? And we're watching more movies. We're watching, well, not more movies. We're watching more uh, video content than ever before. Um, social media posts with, with video have more views than just a normal social, video, social media post. We're streaming now more than ever. And I think all of these, these changes that's going on with video are being amplified due to the, the current situation, right? Um, just with this coronavirus, uh, everybody's staying at home and they're watching movies, whether they're watching Netflix or Disney Prime, they're going on Instagram, they're posting on Instagram, uh, there's different challenges going on and all of this is video, whether it's Twitter, Snapchat, TED Talks have been around for quite a long time, there's this Facebook Live so you can go live and everyone can watch something live. I've only used that once, I think, but uh, it's a cool feature. Um, and then online meetings, and, and I mean, that's what we're doing right now. We're doing a webinar, but using Zoom, using Skype, um, there's other, other clients out there as well. Um, we're doing, using videos more for training as well. Um, so I use, use videos a lot for training, and I'm all, also on a, a committee at Cortevin, which we're trying to produce more videos for training so that I don't have to take so much time out of my day as a scientist to train the new interns. I can say, oh, here, I made a video from last year and you can watch that content while I'm preparing something else. Um, so uh, that's, I mean, just, yeah, video, 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 right? So um, I've got a couple of graphs there about, about how the world is changing. The stock price, price of Zoom is going up, but it crashed yesterday because apparently there's some privacy concerns. So that's always something to, to take into to, to mind as well. One thing that we're doing at Corteva is uh, I'm on a team that's looking at virtual field tours because a lot of what we do throughout the summer is, is visit site to site, maybe around the country or around North America. And we look at different trials um, at different sites. And because we might not be able to do that, we have to somehow figure out how we can still share that experience um, while staying at home. So uh, we're pushing on that. And that might be a future webinar, in fact, because that's a, a really hot topic right now. Anyways, I use YouTube a lot. It's kind of my, my platform of choice, I would say. I would give up Netflix and uh, Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat and all that just for YouTube. It's definitely my number one. Not everyone feels that way, but I love watching the content on YouTube and it's getting better and better. Um, yeah, so growing up, I had a camera like this. This is not me, but uh, making videos was very hard. Uh, because the battery didn't last very long and you were recording onto a VHS tape and then there was no way to edit the video. So you just made this video and there was no way to cut and paste and, and unless you really knew how to do that. And as a kid, I definitely did not. You know, how did I leverage video technology in my research? So there's a number of different ways. Um, first of all, just when I developed my protocols, my materials and methods, and I wanted to train uh, different students. And we had, we had quite a few, a few um, graduate students or undergraduate students that would be working for us. And I was sometimes in class or away at a conference and I couldn't always teach everybody what exactly we were doing, how we were doing it. So I would just strap my GoPro to my head and I would do what I was doing and I'd make a short video clip and I'd put it on YouTube and then I could ex explain, just go to this YouTube link and it'll explain everything you need to know. If you have any other questions, you can come to my office or text me or whatever. Um, that was great for training. For documentation, I can see how things were done. I can go back later on. And this worked out a lot, both um, in real life, but also um, when I was working with software, right? And working with software, 
um, I was training different students how to do things and it's the same thing like it, there's a lot of steps involved and, and often um, a student would come in and who hadn't done it in you know two or three weeks they're like how do I do this again just watch the, the three minute video and it'll explain exactly how you how you do it and then voila and off they're off they are running and and a lot of the time it's to remind myself sometimes because often often I forgot forget as well Uh, presentations so I you know once I had these videos then I could use them in, in utilize them in presentations as well so this really worked for this is a, a photo a video of my defense um, but yeah it really captures people's attention uh, when they're sitting in the audience they're like oh there's a video I can watch a video and everyone's like zoom zooms right into a video so then then I don't have to worry about being remember what I'm gonna say or being um, scared or nervous or whatever because everyone's watching the video they're not watching me and I know the video is not going to mess up. Well, hopefully. Um, and then here's just a picture of me, uh, and we stuck um, with Velcro these tablets to my to my poster one time. I believe this was at the ASTA conference in Chicago a few years ago. So use those same videos that I just showed you, but but added them to the to my pet presentation. Um, another way that I used it is is just for collecting data in itself. So. Uh, I did a lot of time lapse. This, together with my friend Kyle Parmley, uh, we just stuck the GoPro in the growth chamber, and it took a picture every minute or every two minutes, whatever it would be. And then we spliced all those images together, and this key, this created a really neat uh, picture. I mean, we're not really collecting data at this point, but it worked great for presentations to see how those plants grow over time. Um, down in the bottom left here um, is just a picture. You probably can't see it too well because the setting on Zoom is. Um, that's from Dr. Schnabel's lab at University at Iowa State, and they're using cameras in the field to take pictures and time lapses, and then using some advanced engineering and software to then calculate the, the growth of the plant and then the, the pick and the tassel size and, and that sort of st stuff. Um, one thing I al also wanted to do is just an efficiency analysis. So um, I had a lot of undergrads working with me. One thing that I wanted to do, I and I didn't end up doing this because I didn't want to be too big brother-y, um, but you know, just, just film um, everybody uh, doing our thing for the whole day because this would take you know, the better part of a day. And I could then scrub through that footage and see, you know, is Matt, Matt is here in the blue shirt in the middle. I could count how many, how many that he did compared to how many that Lauren or that John or Derek did in that same amount of time. And we actually got this idea from, uh, we're looking, uh, we all park at, at Iowa State, we all park um, by the greenhouse and there's a parking lot there and our office is close by and the parking police would come by throughout the day and we couldn't park there and then, because we're grad students, we're there all night anyways, we wanted to bring our cars in the evening, but we didn't know when the parking police would stop checking. Um, you know, the sign said 4.30, but it was it really 4.30, so we would like film the parking lot and then scrub through the footage to see when the last you know when the when the parking police stopped coming and like oh they only come till four o'clock every day so if we park after four we should should be okay 3d visualization so uh so part of my research was looking at soybean roots and and creating these 3d models of the soybean roots so uh together with some of the engineers at iowa state and dr baskar's lab is we create these 3d models um using some 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 imagey imaging technology but taking these images and creating these these videos or these these are actually gifs of these roots rotating on the left hand side uh, those were great for not only for for presentations but for the the data analysis as well um, and then these uh, pca plots so working with the soybean core collection uh, this one was actually created by my friend race higgins um, and race created this using all the 19,000. Um, genotypes in the USDA uh, core collection for soybeans. So we just created a, a PCA uh, plot with uh, three different principal components uh, based on their SNPs. So there's 50k SNPs and it becomes this big universe of, of each, each dot there is a different genotype. Uh, whereas the core collection that I use in my project just looked at about 300 genotypes and I was able to make this, this 3D rotating um, uh, PCA plot. And I, I really like it because there's things that you can see in a 3D PCA plot that you can't see in a 2D PCA plot, right? And especially you're looking at maybe the, the Japanese, um, the green ones, and you probably can't see it because of the resolution, but all the green uh, dots in that corner, those are all from Japan. 
whereas the American accessions are these blue ones up top. So you can see how they, they kind of spread apart. And I, I, just, I just really like PCA plots. If you're interested in how I made these, I have a tutorial on YouTube on my YouTube channel. As Austin and I were talking earlier before we started is Austin works a lot with soybean and looking at IDC and using drone footage. So he knows a lot about this. So he's using video technology, imagery technology a lot in his research. Um, but here's some of the, the trials that Kyle and I, I were running during our, our, uh, our PhD. So yeah, taking video can help you collect data as well as in these presentations as well. And so even though I created these videos a, a couple of years ago, they're still coming in handy for me. Um, and uh, perpendicular to the, the line of the soil horizon. And it's only this, only this tap root that actually um, burrows deep into the soil. So I did follow it and, and we got down two and a half feet. Um, but what we also saw is get a lot of these lateral roots. Here's some of its neighboring plant with a lot of nodules on them. A lot of them. So <clears throat> just a clip from a quick uh, video that Kyle Parmley and myself made out in the field one day, and this was very impromptu. Um, but we were standing out there and I had my video recording equipment, which was essentially just my phone and, a, and my, my gimbal that you see behind me. And we thought, well, why not? Let's just make a five minute video. So we both made a, each made a five minute video in the field. I think this was at the time that we were making a video um, for the ASTA student video contest. So that's why we were kind of in the, in the thought process of making videos. But another way that I leverage video technology for my research is that um, I retrain myself. So <clears throat> as plant breeders, you know, we write code in R, we're using all these plant breeding tools and we're learning as we go and it's frustrating and it's hard and it's rewarding. Um, and then spring hits and we're out to the field and we're gone to the field, um, working in the field. And then uh, after harvest is done, we're back, back in our office or back in the classroom. We open up our, our program or our, our script or we scratch our head. I did not annotate this as well as I should have. Right. And, and, uh, so what I would do is I would just make videos explaining to my future self that this is what I had done. And I started just uploading those up, uh, up to YouTube for the heck of it and more or less for safekeeping so that um, if I lost my hard drive, it was kind of backed up and people on YouTube started watching them. And, and so then I started making dedicated um, YouTube, YouTube tutorials. Um, and then this is just a, a video that I made actually just last night because I had this footage and you might not see it too well, but I use this just with a macro lens that we had for GoPros, um, just how to how to um, uh, pollinate soybeans. So just a kind of a how-to training video to how to pollinate uh, soybeans. I know Dr. Reed Palmer from Iowa State, he had made one um, and put it on YouTube, which is what everyone seems to use. So, um, so yeah, you can, you can create your own tutorials. I mean, I, you're all graduate students working in plant breeding or getting a plant breeding um, advanced degree, and I'm sure you're using a lot of these tools. So every time you learn or create something new, I, I commend you to add, to stand on everyone else's shoulders and, and put your, your knowledge up on, online on YouTube. So now I'm going to transition into maybe some beginner basics and, and how I actually accomplish all of this. Trimming video, uh, you have a video camera in your pocket 24 seven, you should use it. You know, you don't have to hold it on your, your shoulder and be walking around on with VHS tapes and, and you've got it all right here and it, you know, films in HD or, or even um, 4K, right? Uh, you can trim videos in Windows just in the Photos app. So if you take a video that's too long and you wanna send it to a friend and you only want like three seconds out of it or two minutes out of a five minute video, you can do that even without any software. Um, using your smartphone, my nephew taught me this, you can pause the recording and then start a recording again and then pause it and then start it and pause it and start it and your smartphone should uh, put all of those together into one file. And so they were, my nephews are obviously stuck at home because there's no school right now. And so they were making some videos and sending them to me um, and it was quite cool. Using your, 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 your Bluetooth earbuds. So I know a lot of people do have Bluetooth earbuds for when they're working out and running. That can provide you with a wireless microphone. So if you're standing far away from your camera and you want to still have that, that strong audio quality, which is usually the, the worst thing about people's videos is the audio 
Um, it's always, they're talking far away or there's a big echo or there's wind blowing in the microphone. Um, that can really help you. So that's good. And sharing um, video via Zoom. So click that video streaming button or don't have it click grant. I'm not sure, whatever it may be. Uh, so there's there's just some quick quick tips and hints. So like you said, like I said earlier, your phone is fantastic. It has a good camera. Um, it has it's easy to use, it's lightweight, has got a big screen, and there's lots of accessories that you can buy uh, to make it better um, and to hold it steady. And one of those is actually a gimbal. Let me grab mine here. So the technology that's available right now, um, and this might be a little bit uh, if there's not good video, but I have this, uh, this gimbal, the same one that's in there. This is $100 on Amazon, and it's, it's so cool. Like I can run down the street, and it will be like smooth video, and you can set this up. It has a little tripod that you can screw into the bottom. Um, there's different modes for time lapse and time panoramic lapse and whatever, but I just used it uh, specifically. If you saw that that video of me standing in the soybean field holding that soybean root, that was filmed with this phone on this gimbal, and uh, I think you know it looks loads better than what was available even five or six years ago. And this you can you can you can switch so it's portrait as well. So right now I have it in landscape, but if you're making a video that you want to put up on Instagram stories or whatever, we all know Instagram stories is, is a portrait mode. You can, you can flip it around. So it's a portrait as well. So this was probably my first big pick per purchase that I got two years ago. Um, just to make with some of those ASTA better seed, better life student videos for the contest. So uh, that's why I got that audio is important. You never notice if audio is good but you always notice if audio is bad. Uh, and um, at these conferences when I go and, and, and at the ASTA one, I always have people come to me and say, the difference of your video was that your audio was so good. It was clear, it was crisp, I, it wasn't muffled, there was no wind, et cetera. So using a microphone, this microphone is the one that I have uh, in the picture. It was $18.89. Um, and I have it just plugged into my computer and it, it makes a world world of difference. And then um, I just have this little Sony recorder too, which was 50 bucks and you can record um, meetings or you can record yourself. Just put that in your pocket and plug in your little uh, microphone and away you go. I've got some other microphones as well too, but we won't get too deep into that. Lighting is important. So um this is a shot actually on the top off the internet but the one on the right hand side here if you can see my mouse i'm not sure if you can if you can see my mouse these the ones on top um is uh, i use those a lot for for imaging my roots during my phd and then i was able to use them for for some of the videos that i made and you can see and this picture of me from the Asta video from this past year, um, I'm in a pretty dark um, seed vault there. I mean, there is some lighting, fluorescent lighting up top, but what made it stand out is you can see that I have got this hot, this soft box light shining on my face. Um, so whether you're taking pictures of plants, whether you're taking or video of plants or video of yourself or whatever your subject may be, having lighting um, is, is uh, very important. Graduate students have opportunities to explore their creative side. So um, the ASTA um, has that Better Seed, Better Life video contest. And it has a, a sweet prize. Um, and I believe they're changing the format this year. So, so um, stay tuned for that because I, I inquired to see if it was still the same. I think they're going to do um, smaller but more uh, videos, uh, video contests instead of the one big one. Uh, last year, the 4-H and Corteva had the Farm Fluencer Contest, and that was there was a big, big prize associated with that. I think there was like 120 videos that were submitted for that contest, which is r ridiculous. And the last three, I just did some Googling to see what other student videos are out there. There's definitely op opportunities there. And then you're, you're practicing and you're, you're building a skill that you will probably use later on in life. At least I, I seem to be. Um, I add a lot of music to my videos, um, maybe not for research, but but for other other videos, if I'm doing them to put up on YouTube, um, adding adding 
video does add some production volume value. I download video, download music um, either off YouTube or, or um, you know, there's special websites that you can go to that are free. They, they allow you to download and utilize this royalty free, free music. So make sure whenever you put music up on, on YouTube, it's, it's royalty free and you give um, proper, um, um, sort of that you have either you're certified to do it or that you know you you recognize someone it was someone else's songs you can't like put some Beatles songs up on your video and put it on YouTube because it'll just take it and be flagged and taken down okay so I use um, a program called Adobe Premiere and if you you can get it on PC or Mac and actually I was just looking I'm I'm still on my my student version so Students can save uh, uh, over 60%. Uh, so I pay $20 a month for this, and I get all of like Adobe's programs. So Photoshop, Lightroom, uh, After Effects, Premiere, um, Adobe like Acrobat, like there's tons, they have tons of, of ones, but I, I primarily just use Premiere because um, it's, it's kind of the, the program that I, that I use the most. But, after Effects can come in handy in Lightroom as well as Photoshop if you're if you want to learn and and like learning these tools they seem pretty daunting at first but there's like a there's a billion tutorials on YouTube um, or on Skillshare or other websites masterclass where you can go and you can learn all of these skills in your spare time if you have if you so want to do that so um, I use Adobe Premiere um, there's free ones as well I think DaVinci um, is a free one that's most popular. I haven't quite tried it yet. I did download it, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to use Adobe um, because that's what I'm most familiar with. So instead of, of taking a bunch of my own footage, what I thought we could do is we could just go to, go to YouTube and, um, and we can, and look at, at some other videos and what they have done and maybe try to mimic it. So I've, I have a video in mind. Um, I'm gonna to go to the ASTA page. So the America Sea Trade Association has this video. Hold on. It'll be pretty choppy because I'm not. Picture all the things that enhance our quality of life. Healthier foods. Greener outdoor spaces. More vibrant plants and flowers. Better fabrics. Okay. So I watched that video and I wrote down everything that the narrator said. Um, and then what I did is I just uh, opened up the voice recording app in Windows, which is here. And I basically recorded back everything she said, because I'm going to make a video like this, but it's not going to be this video, but it's just for the tutorial. All right. And then I went to a different website, um, Adobe Stock. So there's a whole bunch of stock footage websites, and this is just an example of one. And what I did is I typed in farming. So I search, searched for farming, and you can see here there's a bunch of videos of a tractor, of people looking at soybeans, of Holsteins, of um, beans germinating, whatever. And I downloaded about 30 of these. So there are, you can download these previews. You have to buy them if you're doing it um for real but for the for the for the for our reasoning for today we can just download the preview version and we'll work with that so i, I downloaded some random video clips that we could use today and then i went to a website called uh, ben sound which where you can get royalty free music and i just played uh, actually this particular song i used in one of my videos um, or when we went to Australia to a conference. Anyway, so you'll you'll start hearing the same songs over and over because a lot of the creators on YouTube will use the same music because there's only a certain amount of music that you can use. Okay, so let's open up Pre Premiere. So I started a new project already, and I put all of my footage here. So I've got a bunch of I've got thirty. Um, 30 little video clips. Um, I have my narration that I, that I, that I, <laughs> my computer, and I have the song that I downloaded as well. 
So I'm just gonna take all of those and put them into Premiere. And this might see, seem a little daunting at first, um, but as you learn, you learn one thing at a time and you kind of build on it and, and you, before you know it, you're making videos. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go through all of the, the data that I, the media that I just imported. And I'm gonna find this song and I'm gonna put the song down first. So I'm gonna drag the song onto the timeline. So here's the timeline, uh, the song, the minutes are up here, audio tracks are on the bottom, video tracks are on the top, and this song is whatever, three minutes and 12 seconds about. I'm gonna double click. Uh, I don't wanna use that whole song, and I don't wanna make a, uh, I don't want to make a video that's three minutes and 12 seconds long. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to shrink this down and I can see the song. Um, maybe let's make something that's about 40, 40 seconds. Cause I think that's how long my narration is. Next, I want to go back over here and I have my narration that I saved. I just recorded. I'm going to pull a song down here so it doesn't get in the way. I like to have my songs at the bottom Then I'll have my narration on top of it. And uh, I'm gonna play, okay, let's first play the song. Can everybody hear that? Yeah, okay. Um, and then I'm gonna put my narration maybe, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I don't want my narration to start right away, but let's, let's say start about there. Um, I'm gonna mute my song and I'm just gonna play my narration. Things that enhance our quality of life. Healthier food. Okay. Greener outdoor spaces. So that sounds more cool. vibrant. Plant. Everybody hates the sound of their own voice, myself included. But um, we're we're cooking now. So we've got we've got all the audio in there already. Um, now we have some video. So, um, but but before we go to the video, I wanted to try a, a little bit of a trick that I've learned as of recently. If you follow me on Instagram, which pretty much none of you do, which is fine. I've got like a dozen followers, but um, I, I like to put um, audio or my music, my videos to music and how they change at the beat of the music. The scenes will get changed by the beat of the music and how I do that, and I'm gonna show you right away. So we're gonna listen to the first 30 or 40 seconds of the song, and at the start beat or like the, the first beat of each measure, I'm gonna press the, the M on my keyboard and that's gonna make a mark um, on the song, and that'll allow me to put the video according to those different marks. So whenever there's a beat, then the video clip will change, and then it'll look like, um, it'll look a little bit like someone more professional did it, or it, it, it'll just align better. So let's listen to the song. This is gonna take about 40 seconds, uh, and I'm gonna press the M button when I want the M button to come. Okay. Down. So you saw these little green ticks go at the top of the screen. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of the um, all of the videos that I saved, that I downloaded off the internet, off the Adobe stock site. I'm gonna highlight them all and I'm gonna put them on the timeline. I'm gonna select clip up here. I'm gonna scroll down to automate to sequence. And I want to place them at the number, the unnumbered markers that we just made. So it's going to put them down according to the little um, markers on the screen and in the sort order, whatever order I have. There we go. So now all of these um, videos are aligned. Um, there's some spaces here, but they're aligned kind of on, on top of the track. 
So I can go to different parts and see that sure enough, there's, there's the video is there. And there's a little bit of gaps here that I'm just trying to fix. I'm not sure why. Anyway, so we're, we're well on our way to, to finishing this video. Um, and I'm not going to play it for you because it's not going to sound good um, um, over Zoom. There's a, there's a new clip that comes in. So that really didn't take us very long. It's 1.40 and we started, you know, like six or seven minutes ago. And, uh, and so what else I wanted to do is I wanted to put the NAPB logo on. So let's put the, because I, I see the ASTA logo here. Let's do the NAPB logo. So all I did is just searched on Google Images, National Association of Plant Breeders logo, and it was the first logo that popped up. And luckily, you can see this is a vector image file. You can see that there's the little checkerboard behind it, and there's not a white board behind it. This is what you want, because then it's transparent, and you can see behind it. There's no background. So I saved that, and I put it in the same file that everything was in. And so I have it here. It's called NAPB logo. I'm going to drag that onto my timeline as well. Now you can see that the NAPB logo is in the middle of this clip. Well, I don't really want it in the middle of the clip. So I'm going to try to move it. So here's everything to do with the NAPB logo. Scale. I'm going to move the scale. Let's go down. Let's put it at maybe 35%. So it's a lot smaller and I can move it around the screen. Maybe this isn't a good scene to put it on. Let's, uh, yeah, here, well, that's too dark. Let's put it in the bottom right hand. Ooh. Let's put it in the bottom right hand corner like ASTA had theirs. So I just move it down and it's kind of hidden as well just because of the grass that these people are walking through. And I can now stretch out this logo so it, it's on top of everything all the time. So in every scene now, that NAPB logo will be there. Um, it sounds like the, the audio, and you might not be able to hear it, but the audio of the, um, the song is loud and my narration which i'll turn the mute off is quiet so let's listen to this a little bit make sure all the things that enhance your quality of life so you could hear me but the song is way too loud so i'm going to turn the sound down on the song i can figure out how to And it's rarely pretty easy. There's just this bar here and it shows how many decibels it is. I'm just gonna drag this bar down, down there. Healthier food. It's a lot quieter now. There's nothing more annoying than trying to hear someone's narration over the music when the music's too loud. Greener outdoor spaces. Okay, so I'm listening to myself say greener outdoor spaces and it's, it's too loud. Um, it's getting chopped off, and I can see that um, up here on the bar on the right-hand side, the volume bar, and you can see that uh, the waveforms here in the green, it's touching the top, and I don't want it to touch the top. Um, so what I can do, it's, it seems like it's fine for the most part, but it's just these, this first little bit, it's bad. So I'm going to um, just select that. And I'm going to move down just by hitting these two little buttons. I'm going to, oh, I hit it too many times. I'm going to just pull down the volume there. So now, picture all the things that enhance. Now it's not going up into the red quality of life. Red, it's staying there. In fact, it's almost a little quiet. So I'm going to lift it up to about there. Healthier food, greener outdoor spaces. A little bit low. More vibrant plants and flowers. So just a little bit of sound design. Flowers. Better fabrics. Now picture where all so these things come from. 
140. They didn't just happen. They all started with an idea that was nurtured, cultivated, improved along the way. Through science and innovation and caring hands, they all started with C. Where better life begins. So, a little bit of a, um, just to let you guys in on, on what I did is I put these, the stock footage in order before before the webinar because I kind of knew we'd be doing something like this so I practiced so I'm going a lot faster than I probably would and um, what one thing you'll notice when you watch the video after I export it is the the images on the screen fit into what the narration is so here is, um, there's a person sewing and it's a better fabrics is what I say better fabrics so I went and found someone sewing um, on the Adobe stock site and I downloaded that and made sure that that was in the sequence. Moving these around is, is relatively easy. I can just click on, you know, if I want to move this uh, woman around, I can put this anywhere and it's now it's over here. And if I want to put this clip in its place instead, now instead of better fabrics, during better fabrics, instead of having that woman sewing, um, better fabrics a child pushing a wheelbarrow so it, it doesn't fit um, as well to the story so I'm just gonna undo those two two movements now picture where all where all these things um, and so my computer is still trying to render these files so it's tripping up a little bit and you're not seeing it you're not in the room with me seeing it um, but after I export it it'll be smooth and seamless and it'll look really good and I'll probably put this up on the maybe on my channel or on the NAP, NAPB channel after, so you can see what it looked like, the finished product. But before we go, um, one thing I noticed is I wanted to kind of end on a, you know, videos, I like them when they, the sound kind of trails off and there's, there's a, a kind of a dip to black. So I'm going to change that in the, in the effects region here um, in audio video transitions, dissolve. I'm going to dip to black. So I'm going to drag that effect onto my video. And there it is. So this last scene, um, the auger uh, and, uh, un or the combine unloading the, the wheat, it, it kind of fades, fades out to black. But I want it to fade out to black a little bit longer than that. So I'm going to drag that effect probably about that long. So it kind of slowly fades. But what I also want to do besides that is I want to, I want the NAPB logo to do the same thing. So I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to drag it over here and drag the effect over. And so now the NAPB logo will be at the same time that the video fades. But if the, if the video is fading, we should have the audio fade as well, right? So let's do that with the audio. In fact, one thing I like when I make my videos, I like the audio stay a little bit longer than the video. So let's say the audio, we're gonna end it at about there. Um, that's the song. It kind of switches. The song kind of switches into a bridge or a breakdown or something, whatever you would call it. So I'm gonna just put a little one of these um, dots here uh, in, the, in the song volume. And I'm gonna put another one there and I'm just gonna grab a hold of that dot and just drag it down and so the audio over time and fade and so you kind of get that effect that okay this is the end of the video right because everything's fading uh, roll the credits or whatever I'm gonna save this and I think we're just about done um, so that's our video uh, I'm not gonna Maybe I will play it if I switch my effect over to video, but maybe not. I might have to um, export this and then I'll, I'll put it up for everyone to watch, but let's, let's give it a shot. This is given that my computer has rendered everything in the background, which I'm sure it hasn't. All right, I'm gonna make this bigger. All right. Picture all the things that enhance our quality of life. Healthier food, greener outdoor spaces, more vibrant plants and flowers, better fabrics. Now picture where all these things came from. They didn't just happen. They all started with an idea that was nurtured 
cultivated, improved along the way. Through science and innovation and caring hands, they all started with seed, where better life So there's one last thing I wanted to do. Um, there's a scene here that has a sunset. And I, I try to put the sunsets at the end of the video, kind of it's like, oh, we're fading into the sunset. Um, similar to how you'd use Instagram or Lightroom or um, anywhere else where you post pictures, you can also change the color on these images. So let's quickly do that. Um, I've clicked on this particular clip, which is a combine, combining some wheat or some rye wheat, it looks like. And I am going to just increase the saturation a little bit, like so, similar to what you would do on Instagram. And maybe increase the color temperature a little bit. Maybe it'll get a little bit of more of that, that orange, that red-orange glow. And you can turn down the exposure, turn it up, whatever it may be. This is just a clip video, quick video I made. Um, I'm going to export it just by clicking File and then Export. Um, so we're going to output it as uh, whatever AST or not ASTA. It's NAPB Webinar. We'll put in my videos and we'll save and Q. It's going to be 61 megabytes about. So now my computer will work like a Work hard to export it, and, and you'll have a finished product at the end. Anyway, that's basically what I had today. Um, I welcome any questions. If you want to check out uh, my YouTube channel, um, I can po post that link up as well. I've got videos on plant phenomics research, on agricultural outreach, um, um, plant breeding stats. So how to do BLUPs or R BLUP, um, heritability, different types of graphs, dendrograms, phylograms, you know, that sort of thing, heat maps. Anyway, um, Zara, I'll give it back to you and, and we can continue on um, with any questions that people may have. Great, thank you for that awesome webinar. That was really um, a really interesting tutorial. And if you have any of the, your um, websites or links that you'd like to share, we can send that out in our follow-up email regarding this, and we can also share them on our social media platforms okay. um, so that people can find them really easily.